Hey guys, it's Libby, and I would like to begin this video with a moment of silence for my tripod. Yes, it has served me well, but then David tore one of its legs off, so we're on the floor today. And what we will be doing on the floor is reviewing the book Redemption in Indigo by Karen Lord. I listened to the audiobook of this, which is why I don't have a physical copy, um, so let me start by saying that the um, audiobook narrator is um, perfectly good. Uh, I wouldn't discourage you from listening to the audiobook, but she doesn't like add anything particularly magical in the way that Stephen Briggs does with the Discworld audiobooks, um, so just go with whichever your preference is. So this book is based on a Senegalese folktale. Um, I'm not familiar with the original folktale, so um, I'm not sure if the main character of the novel is the same as the main character of the story, but the novel at least uh, focuses on a woman called Pama um, who has recently left her husband to go back and live with her parents because her husband is uh, a glutton and a fool and she's kind of sick of having to deal with his embarrassingness. And she also gets sort of mixed up with the spirits slash gods called the Jombi uh, when she gets given a uh, stick that's called the chaos stick uh, that can control chaos and like chance. And the chaos stick actually belongs to one of the gods who, you know, wants it back. I'm sure he will just ask nicely and then she will give it to him and there will be no problems. Now the thing that I found interesting about this book is that it it's going really hard on the feel of the folktale. I feel like a lot of times there is a sort of tone and a pacing and a selection of emphasis that we use to tell fairy tales when we are telling them to children, uh, but then when people grow up it's expected that they will read like adaptations of fairy tales, which are presented more like other books or movies. But this book is fighting that. It's telling an adult story in the way that you would tell a story to a child. The narrator has a voice of his or her own, and there also isn't really a need to um, provide solid explanations for all of the various weird things that happens. Like, there is a spider god who's like a giant spider who can talk and drink booze. And I feel like if this was being told in um, like a standard adult or YA fantasy, there would be an explanation of like what the god's world is like and all of the various rules about how spider gods work. But in Redemption and Indigo, it's just like, nope, spider god. And then the thing that I didn't really have a problem with but might turn some people off is that the pacing is really slow. The plot has probably about as much context as the French version of Cinderella, but it's drawn out to the length of a full novel. But it's drawn out to the length of a full novel. It's a fairly short novel. Um, I think, oh gosh, I don't know. I think it's like 180 pages if you get the physical copy. And the way that they do this in, like, not the most boring way ever, um, actually reminded me of Homer's Iliad to make a reference to something that everyone has definitely read. Um, so to, to educate yourself, the Iliad um, is, is 24 books long and each book would take about an hour to recite, which means if you wanted to recite the entire Iliad, uh, it would take all day. And of course, the Iliad was meant to be recited. It was only written down later. So the working theory was that you would perform certain books on certain occasions, but that everyone would like know the full context and be able to fit this section into the greater story without having to hear it at that precise moment. And so several of the chapters feel like they could um, sort of stand on their own. Three in particular spring to mind. Um, uh, there, it's when Ansike, uh, Pama's husband, um, has come to try to convince her to come back um, so that she can cook for him. Um, and he is hanging out in her parents' village, kind of biding his time. Um, and of course he gets hungry, so he does all of these various dumb things and um, he gets himself in trouble and then Pama has to help him and then she doesn't want 
him to embarrass her in front of everybody else in the town, so she makes up some story and people buy it, but then increasingly they're like, wow, and CK has like a lot of bad luck. And these incidents happen three times, of course, has to be three, magic number. And you can absolutely see where each of them is going and how this is all going to end. Um, but you still, at least I still enjoyed the process of like, to put it in the absolute worst way possible, the process of being talked down to um, and like having everything laid out for me when you could just say, you know, and you know what's going to happen next. That, uh, that's something that I miss in modern storytelling. So if that sounds like the kind of thing that you want, I would recommend this. But obviously, if you've been listening to this review and going, that sounds really boring, why would anyone want that? This is one to skip. It's much more uh, a book of form than of content, I think. So if you're not enjoying the form, you're not going to enjoy the book. I personally gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you again soon.